The movie begins by foreshadowing its ending scene, where an elderly man who is naked and surrounded by French soldiers is shown being tortured in the bitter cold. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew enters the room and repeats a specific address to one of the soldiers to confirm it. The soldier nods in agreement and hands the elderly guy a cup of coffee, presuming that the torture is now finished and the coffee will help him restore his core temperature. He cries in response as he doesn't know the hiding place of one of the movie's important characters, Ali Law Point, a revolutionary member of FLN. Matthew asks a soldier to lend him a military outfit so the residents of Kasbah won't recognize him when he finds Ali. The man screams and shouts as he attempts to flee by running to a door, but the soldier stops him and forces him to continue with the army to find Ali, where he is hiding with three FLN members behind a wall that the FLN constructed in the Kasbah. After arriving at the address as the man specifies, Matthew tells Ali and other FLN members outside the wall that the French government has eliminated the entire organization, leaving them as the only survivors and that they must surrender as they will be given the opportunity of proper trials in return or they risk being bombed. As some time passes without any contact from their end, Matthew issues the order to demolish the structure, and the film closes with an explosion claiming every FLN member's life. Cut to the scene in 1954 where Ollie operates an impromptu gaming table on the streets. Hence, a police officer begins to pursue him. A few Frenchmen catch him as he flees, and in his rage, he strikes one of the men in the face. The scene shifts to a prison where he, after being apprehended by police, reaches and sees an Arab guy being executed by the guillotine, who shouts long live Algeria on his way to execution. Ali is an illiterate laborer whose previous records show that he was sentenced to eight months for resisting arrest after being imprisoned for vandalism at a reformatory in 1942 and public disruption in 1944, which adds suspicion to his personality. Later, Ali is shown on the street of Kasbah, the historic Islamic neighborhood, after serving his five-month sentence. He is accosted by a young child who delivers him a letter. Upon request, the boy provides evidence that the note was sent for him by an FLN member. So he asks the boy to read the letter, which is a directive to kill a police officer. He learns from the letter about the Moorish Café, Rurandan, where the police officer visits Marabi, the owner and a police informant, daily. He stays there while pretending to take a cup of tea. Ali is then told to proceed to the area around the café, where he will encounter a woman wearing a white burqa, who will give him the gun to shoot that cop. Later, Ali reaches the woman after following the instructions, but when he points the gun at the police, he finds it empty. As a result, he beats the officer and chases the woman to find out who set him up to protect himself. He first introduces him to Ali as Lahadi Jaffer, and then explains to him why it is important to confirm that he was not a spy on the French side. Because if he had been, he would not have attempted to assassinate that French police officer. In addition, he admits that the lack of a suitable hiding spot makes it risky for him to shoot the police officer. At this point, he offers Ali a position as an undercover FLN agent to clear the Kasbah of drug addicts, prostitutes, and intoxicants so that they can use it as a safe place of refuge for their covert operations against the French government. As the scene proceeds, it shows FLN prohibiting all sorts of vices, including consumption of alcohol, prostitution, and all other wrongdoings, in 1966. Those in Kasbah who attempt to consume alcohol or cigarettes are being killed or tortured to eliminate evil. Then the scene shifts as Ali looks for a man named Hassan, and upon finding him, he asks him to stop. He then issues a third warning to him and two others to join the FLN or risk being killed after being spotted in front of him. They laugh back and refuse to do so, and Ali approaches Hassan, who is then shot. The boys get scared after watching Hassan dead, and are ordered to spread the word about joining the FLN in the whole Kasbah. Meanwhile, a couple involving Mahmoud and Fatiha is getting married under the jurisdiction of the FLN. However, the couple couldn't legally, as the colonial government was abusing its powers and stopping them from being one. The next scene shows the FLN's simultaneous killings of French police personnel in Algiers by using a tactic that involves hiding their firearm in various locations as they target French officers and take their weapons from them. This is the result of the command given to all FLN members to exterminate the entities of the Algiers Quakers as payback for what they had done to them. As the scene progresses, it shifts to a nighttime setting with a French police chief investigating murders and recording its FIA to Corbière. He contacts higher-ups in Paris who want to increase the number of police on the streets, but he doesn't think this would succeed. Later, he travels to Casbah with three other men and decides to plant bombs there to demonstrate their strength 
and exact revenge on the residents of Kasbah. This causes a significant number of civilian deaths, especially among women and children. Afterward, these people organize a march to protest this violence, but Jaffer and other FLN members stop them, threatening that the French police will kill them all. After that, the French authorities installed multiple checkpoints at the Kasbah's entrance to restore security. Everybody who departs is searched. But, out of respect for Muslim culture, they don't search for women wearing burqas. The FLN takes advantage of this by having women sneak out pistols that men subsequently use to assassinate police, even after strict security. Again after experiencing such a setback, the FLN comes up with a plan. They prepare their three FLN female members and instruct them to change their appearance while posing as French women to go through the security at the checkpoints unnoticed. These female members switch out their burqas for stylish skirts and alter their hairstyle by removing their head covering, wearing it open, and applying cosmetics. Later, Jaffer arrives to give instructions on how to drop explosives. He advises them to go via the divan checkpoint, as it remains busy, and wouldn't raise any suspicions. After this, he gives each female team member a handbag with a bomb and instructs them to place it in the respective locations, the Air France office, the cafeteria in Rue Makelet, and the milk bar in Rue DLSLY. They will have 25 minutes to leave that location because all of these locations are situated outside the Kasbah. All three members attempt to blend into the area where they must lay the time bombs while acting like they are with a friend's company or have an appointment. As a result, they all succeed in leaving their bags in the location specified by the Jaffer, and they all arrive back at the Kasbah within the given time limit. The next scene shows Lt. Col. Matthew Philippe parading through Algiers streets. And a voiceover announces that Jean Soro, Inspector General of the Administrator, oversaw a special meeting to combat terrorism in Algiers, during which crucial decisions were made to uphold law and order and protect people and property. Also, that proclamation states that General Carell would take command of the 10th Paratroop Division and be responsible for maintaining law and order by employing all military, civil, and special authorities given to him. Lt. Col. Matthew Philippe, born in Bordeaux in 1907 and a member of the French resistance movement, is also introduced in the announcement. Colonel Matthew Philippe begins his search for the culprits of the bombings after taking command in an effort to save as many lives as possible. He then begins to instruct the army by displaying the videotaped footage of the Kasbah's entrance, which effectively identifies the FLN's strategy of sneaking out of the Kasbah as a German woman. He goes on to inform his comrade that while there are 400,000 Arabs in Algiers overall, not all of them are hostile against them. The primary problem they are currently experiencing is identification, so Colonel Matthew Philippe has devised a strategy to identify FLN leaders. He then instructs its army to use a pyramid organizational structure, which consists of a chief of staff at its top who nominates just one person, who then nominates two. Each of the nominated persons further nominates two. In this way, just three people are known to each individual, one of whom he selects and the other two of whom he chooses. This arrangement will prevent anyone from being aware of their enemy. After this, FLN calls an eight-day strike to attract the attention of the US to demonstrate that it is more than just a small minority and requires independence from France. This strike appears successful as the Muslim workers don't work with shutters closed and the children don't go to their schools. However, as soon as Colonel Matthew sends out his forces, they force the shutters to open and the workers and students to report to work and school. This indicates that the FLN is the minority in Algeria, which is detrimental to the US because of the fractured strike. Moreover, to obtain information from the Kasbah locals, call. Matthew orders his forces to capture them during the strike and subject them to various forms of torture, including rape, fire, and waterboarding. Later, they discover enough information about the FLN leaders. Colonel Matthew names this mission Champagne, and also describes FLN's leaders as the wounded heads of tapeworms that can regenerate if left unattended. Thousands of photographs of these members are released in an effort to provoke violence after the FLN is declared to have fallen. FLN leaders then aggressively seek new recruits to hide, and all gather together to discuss how to live longer because, in their view, the FLN will last longer if they do. Jaffer instructs the other FLN leaders and members to disperse rather than stick together and hide in various locations across Kasbah. Thus they use a variety of escape strategies to go from one location to another. Techniques involve dressing as a Muslim woman by doing a white burqa and hiding behind the empty spaces of buildings. Now, Jaffer and Ali are seen traveling between hideouts while wearing a white burqa, 
but the French police identify them thanks to their men's shoes. Thus, reacting to the gunfire, they flee, fire back, and seek cover inside a house. After taking refuge, two women suggest they hide in the small house dried up well. After some time, the cops approach various houses in search but are unsuccessful. Later, Colonel Matthew displays his capture while fielding questions from reporters about Mitty. He also defends and degrades FLN's tactics by asserting that they are no more than a minority compared to those used by hegemonic forces like the US and France. The next scene shows how Matthew keeps using cruel torture to coerce crucial information from the inhabitants of the Kasbah. Once he captures Jaffer and other FLN commanders, he proves his strategy's success and winning from FLN. Ali is the final FLN member. The movie then returns to the opening sequences, where one of the FLN members is made to reveal Ali's hiding place. Colonel Matthew attempts to talk with Ali and three FLN members, but they rebuff him. The discussion ends as a bomb explodes, killing Ali and his companions. Colonel Matthew departs the bombed-out location believing he has killed the last leader of the FLN, regarded as the tapeworm's head. In 1960, the Algiers throng, yelling pro-independent slogans, was driven back by the outnumbered French police. The narrative discloses that Algiers won independence from the French government after two additional years of fighting. 